What's up guys, welcome back to see you out there and welcome back to another Wednesday how-to video. You guys voted on the community page on YouTube and the video y'all wanted to most see this week is how to jetty fishing. It's a very, very relevant term right now. Everybody's jetty fishing right now. We have the bull red run going on. A lot of our videos lately on the red boat have been at the jetty, so that makes sense. That's a good video. So what we're gonna do guys is this video is gonna be a brief overview. What jetties are, how to set up on jetties, and then how to target multiple species on those jetties. You guys have seen all the rigging videos we've done where we talk about specific ways to fish live shrimp. Those all apply here, guys. This is where those videos fill in. And what we're gonna do is as we move on through the year and we move on through the cycles and we hit some of the fish spawns and migrations that we talk about in this video, we'll do a more detailed video on that specific bite at the jetty. So we're gonna talk about, you know, spring, summer, fall and winter in this one, but then we're going to nail down on them in detail when those bites happen, like the spring sheep's head run or the spring uh, black drum run or the fall bull red run, which we're in the fall bull red run now, so we'll be working on that video soon. But this is a Jetty Fishing 101 entry level beginner how-to video, guys. So if you're looking for some really deep detail, those will be coming. So y'all enjoy this video, and if we didn't answer your questions, y'all remember, uh, put your comments down below and we'll help you out. guys all right so let's talk about jetties let's talk about jetties in particular what they are and and how they affect an ecosystem so a jetty is just a man-made structure of rocks pylons uh seawall something that is built to protect a body of water or protect an area from rough seas in galveston we have a huge shipping channel with huge ports here tons of refineries our jetties are some of the largest I don't know, I would dare to say the largest in the country. I've never seen jetties like we have here. We're talking miles and miles and miles of jetties. So the way these are made is rocks are stacked from the bottom to the top. The deeper the water, the larger the stack at the bottom, tapered up to the top, kind of like a pyramid. Here in a minute, I'm gonna take you guys to the computer. And we're gonna do an illustration, and I'm gonna show you guys in an illustration. Don't want to insult anybody's intelligent, but it is gonna be kind of cartoony. It's the best way for me to explain it to you guys. But how a jetty sets up, how we anchor above a jetty, and then where in the water column to look for fish and what dangers and hazards there are, and then where the fish will tend to position. So first thing let's talk about is what is a jetty and what does it do? All right guys, so we all know that a jetty is a man-made structure, and now we understand that they stack from the bottom to the top like a pyramid. So let's talk about fishing jetties. Now fishing styles and fishing rigs and how to fish them properly, we've talked about before on this channel. Matter of fact, I'll put a link to an old video where we're talking about my five favorite rigs or styles of fishing. And we talk about popping corks, which apply at the jetties. We talk about freelining strip, which applies at the jetties, freelining with a pinch weight, Carolina rig, and a knocker rig. All of those styles of fishing are the exact styles you're gonna use when fishing the jetties. The only trick is, is which rig are you gonna use for which fish? And that's going to come with the seasons and that's going to come with experience. But what I can give you is a quick overview of the seasons, what fish to expect in that season, and then different ways to target it. What you'll find, and what I do myself personally, is when I pull up to a jetty to fish, unless I know the specific bite I'm there for, I know there's schooling bull redfish on the bottom of 20 foot of water, I'll go into it and I'll target it with a multiple ways. Typically, I'll have a popping cork rigged up, I'll have a free line rigged up and I'll have a Carolina rig rigged up. And then I'll usually try all three until I figure a bite out. If I'm getting a trout bite up top or a Spanish mackerel bite up top or sheep's head on a popping cork or redfish on the bottom, I let that dictate the rest of the day. 
if it's just Corey and I fishing and the better bites on one or the other, then we'll switch to that. If I've got multiple people on the water, like you've seen in some of our jetty videos where JP and Misty have joined us, then we've got multiple people fishing multiple ways. That way we don't miss out on a bite. Because keep in mind, if you're in 20 foot of water on a jetty that's 20 foot of rock sloping down underneath you, Redfish may be on the bottom feeding. Sheep's head are going to be all up and down through the structure feeding on the rocks. Your trout or your Spanish may be up high. There's a bunch of different areas. And if you're only fishing one setup or one depth, then you're missing possibly a really good bite on another depth. Uh, an example, the last video we did out at the jetties, I started out with everyone free lining and I threw a Carolina rigged out and I caught a 27 inch redfish. Well, I immediately switched everybody to that style and we started catching redfish. But had we all been free lining like we'd been doing in days past at the jetties, focusing on trout, well, we would have completely missed that redfish bite because it only lasted for about 45 minutes. So you want to make sure you attack a jetty from all angles until you find out what the hot bite is. The redfish may not be feeding that day. The sheep's head may not be feeding because the tide or the current isn't right. Water clarity is not doing it. Moon phase, whatever affects them. But the Spanish mackerel may be feeding on the top or the trout may be moving through in that pretty green water and they may be biting everything that moves. So you wanna make sure that you go out there and try all different water columns. Don't go to the dock and tie on six popping corks, run to the jetties, fish for four hours with straight popping corks and never change it and think that it was a bad day. You are just in a wrong part of the water column, so you wanna mix it up. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you to the computer, we're gonna zoom in on Google Earth, and we're gonna look at the jetties. We're gonna describe when setups, and then how to anchor setups and where to position your boat to be able to move it. And then from there, we're gonna do something fun. I uh, apologize if I'm not very good at it, but I'm gonna to try to go to a program on here and I'm gonna do some illustrations and try to give you a 2D look at a jetty and, and help you envision what I'm talking about here. So we're gonna take care of that and then we're gonna come out of that and then we're gonna talk about the four seasons and what fish to target. All right guys, so let's get to the computer now and get to Google Earth and let's take a look at the Galveston jetties as our example. So here we are on Google Earth. If you are not familiar with this program, um, this is not a video about using Google Earth to find uh, fishing spots, but I'm telling you, if you're not using Google Earth, you really need to. This could uh, increase your fishing by a hundredfold. So we're gonna zoom in here on Galveston, Texas. We're gonna zoom in here on Galveston jetties. Guys that are not from here and aren't familiar with the area, we have a giant, giant, giant shipping port here. We have tons of refineries, so we have a very large um, jetty system. I don't know the exact mileage, but you can tell that the jetties, this is the north jetty, runs all the way down, all the way out, and then our south jetty. And yes, these are giant tankers. We have a giant jetty system. So guys, let's talk about figuring out where you want to fish on the jetties, um, picking an area and then fishing these jetties or how to set up an anchor on the jetties for the right position. So guys, let's zoom in here on the North Jetty and let's go to the North Jetty Boat Pass here. This is marked on here, so we'll start in this spot. This is a very popular area to fish on the North Jetties just because what happens here on the North Jetties is you get a lot of current flow. These steady walls all the way down you don't get a lot of water flow. You get water crashing over it, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes, but you don't get much current. If the current's flowing out and it's on the inside of here, it's stagnant and still on this side, and vice versa if the tide's coming in. But what this north boat cut does and why it's so popular is you get a serious tide dump through here. So if the tide is turning in and it's boiling in here and your water's dumping into this boat cut, all this inside here is very, very good fishing because you've got a strong current coming in and bait fish being forced in. The only problem with the North Boat Cut is traffic. You guys are fishing on what I'm talking about. But anyway, let's talk about fishing the jetty and setting up on it. So we pick a spot here. We've got some water crashing over uh, the top of the jetty, and this is where I want to fish. And I run out here to fish. And the way the wind is out of the south. The wind's coming out of this direction here, guys. And I pull up to the jetties. The best way to anchor to this, I pilot or uh, traditional anchor, is to figure out where you want to be and pull out away. Watch your bottom machine, because remember, like we talked about, this is a pyramid. We're going to look at this on an animation or an illustration here shortly. We don't want to pull right up to these things and drop our anchor, obviously, because by the time it hits the bottom, slacks out of our line, we're back into the jetties. So we pull out here a little ways. We find good, solid sand on the bottom. We don't have that 
tapered down area where the rocks come out far. And we've anchored down, we let our boat drift back, and we set in. Now, we don't want to be sitting right on top of the jetties. And the reason we don't want to be right on top of them, because if we're fishing on the bottom Carolina rigs and we drop straight down, we're going to drop straight into the rocks. We want to cast to the jetties, but we don't want to be so far that we can't make an easy cast there. Typically, I'll try to set up right about the end of a decent cast. So not all the way uh, as far as I can throw it, but, you know, about a three-quarter good shot, and we'll set up. Wind's out of the south, I pile it down, we're casting out of the back of the boat, everything's good to go, we're at a good strong cast, um, and then we're working it. We want to be in the sand when we're anchoring, obviously if you drop it up here in the rocks you're going to probably lose your anchor, but you can always let out more rope. Just be very mindful that current and winds change. If you're set up in here and you feel like you're set up good, and you're set up here and you're five feet from that jetty, well, if that wind shifts, the storm comes through, and that wind starts coming out of this direction, starts coming out of the west, it can blow you back into those jetties, whether you're on high pilot or traditional anchor. So one thing to be mindful of, guys, is not to get too terribly close, anticipating that that wind is going to stay out of this southerly direction all day. You get a shift of wind out of the west-southwest. Next thing you know, you're back on top of the rocks, getting damaged to your fiberglass on your boat. So just be very mindful when you anchor it. And use the wind and use these jetties as a way to block it. If we've got a strong north wind blowing and it's blowing 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, and I know I want to fish the jetties, well, I'm not going to look at fishing the north side of the south jetties if I want to be comfortable. I'm going to try to run in here in protected water, and I'm going to try to set up on the inside, the channel side of the north jetty, where the wind's protected. It's not going to be slick calm, but it's going to be a whole lot nicer, and it's going to be on this side. Then the same thing at this point. You can run around the south jetty, and tuck in back here, and it's going to be protected. Uh, there's always somewhere on the jetties to hide from uh, inclement weather as far as waves go, unless you got a due east. And guys, I'm just talking about Galveston jetties. If you're fishing somewhere else, you can do the same thing on Google Earth with your jetties and find the way to fish it protected. Um, these jetties are very special because the size of them, they just create a large, large protected area to fish. Hey guys, so here's a little tip. Here's a little jetty hack. If you're set up on the jetties and you have a solid raw wall of rock and there's a good wave on the other side, but none of that wave energy is coming through the jetties to your size, you might not be in the right place. One thing that I look for, and you'll see it in some of our jetty videos, and I learned this from some locals that know what they're talking about, um, some very good anglers have taught me this. If you find jetties and you got your wall, this is the top line of the jetties, and it's all craggly. Find areas that drop lower where rocks have been removed or it wasn't built all the way up. And those waves from the opposite side are crashing over and crashing onto your side. And it's creating white water on your side and creating turbulence. Your first instinct would be to leave that area because it's turbulent, because the dirty water is splashing over and it's creating a chaotic environment in the water. That's not the right move. The right move is to seek out those areas. Those areas where the water's crashing over the jetties onto your side and creating current and creating turbulence and stirring the water up, that's where the fish are at. That's the areas you need to target on, guys. So whenever you're looking for a spot that you go to the jetties on Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and it's just stacked boats all the way down the jetty, and you're trying to find somewhere to set up, go look for a spot that has birds and bird poop and they're lined on the jetties and the waves are crashing from the other side to your side, crashing over. Set up and fish that area. What you got to lose? You're already looking for a spot. Your spot you wanted to is, is taken. The spot at the south jetty where you always go is taken by 20 boats. You got that live well full of live bait and you got family on the boat and you want to show them a good time. You're already throwing a dart. Why not throw a dart somewhere where the birds are resting, there's a lot of bird poop on the rocks, and the waves are crashing over, creating current on your side. Set up on that and give it a try. Throw that live bait up into that current. Throw that popping cork up into that current. Throw that free line shrimp, free line bull minnow, free line finger mullet up into that current and let the current sweep them naturally, whichever way it wants to. You'll be surprised that your redfish and your trout are staging in those areas, betting on bait getting washed over the jetties. We all know that the bait pushes up tight to the jetties. Well, that wave comes over and splashes all those finger mullet or menhaden or live shrimp that get at the jetties over onto their side and that bait gets caught in that turbulence and gets disoriented. Those fish know that and their position, they're waiting. 
You'd be surprised how many times I've pulled up on the jetties, waves crashing, and toss them in, and the redfish be stacked up in that one area because they're waiting on bait to come over. They found somewhere that concentrates bait, brings it to them on a conveyor belt. Every wave, they get a fresh new bite. So guys, that's my jetty hack for today's video, is to look for birds on the rocks, look for areas that the birds hang out a lot with bird poop and whatever else, or they're resting there, and look for waves crashing from the opposite side to your side. Give that a shot, regardless of the depth, regardless where the older boats are, give that a shot and see if that doesn't increase your chances, guys. That's today's hack. All right, guys, now check this out. This is a homemade animation I've made for you guys to represent the jetties and our little boats anchored up here. We got us a little, a brand new split window design and we're anchored down out here in the sand. And this, this represents and shows you that pyramid style look um, that the jetties will have with the stacked rocks, wider at the base, narrowing to the tip, and we have our water line here. So what I want to demonstrate with this is kind of what I'm talking about. We've got our boat anchored up and we're washed back to the jetties. The wind's blowing out of the south like we are talking about. And if I take that Carolina rig and I chunk it out of the back of the boat up against the jetties, look what's happened. Now I'm hung up in that craggly rock, that separated rock, because we all know the jetty's not as slick as this pyramid I, I put together here for you. So we don't want to throw a Carolina rig up here on the jetties. If you fish a light enough weight and you're careful enough and you understand how to read the rod tip and read what you're filling, you can successfully do it, but you have to be very, very, very careful. Then you have to stay on top of it. Carolina rig, and we want to fish down here towards the bottom where the flounder, where the redfish, where the black drum are at. We want to be down here. And keep in mind, the jetties aren't going to be as wide at all depths. The deeper the water, the wider the jetty. So if you're in six foot of water, it may not be as drastic. And if you're in 50 foot of water, it may be way more drastic. But just be mindful if you take that Carolina rig or that knocker rig and you throw it out into the jetties right up against it, expecting to get a bite, you can expect 95% of the time you're going to be retying. So in that situation, that's where you throw that free line shrimp. Free line shrimp without a lot of current, we know that they have a natural sink and they're going to hit the water column and they're going to slowly sink down the jetty with the current sweeping them to you or away from you parallel, but they're going to slowly sink and they're not going to get hung up in the rocks. They're not going to get hung up in the jetties. We're free lining that live shrimp and we're going to find that redfish that's scouring the jetties or that sheep's head that's digging around looking for a crustacean or that trout that's up here high in the water column looking for finger mullet or menhaden to bite or surface shrimp to attack. That's where that free line shrimp really comes in handy. And also a popping cork. You throw a popping cork right in here and you got a leader on it sticking down three or four feet. You're going to control that depth and you're not going to allow that bait to get into the jetties and get stuck. You can identify where it's at and you can see where you are by using the popping cork. You can use the popping sound of the cork that we've talked about in videos past to draw the fish to it, but you're not worried about getting hung up in the structure. So that kind of gives you a quick illustration of getting our anchor out here in the sand where it needs to be fishing our Carolina rigs in the right place so we don't get frustrated by getting hung up a lot, letting our free line shrimp drift naturally with the current and the natural weight of the shrimp and the hook bringing him down into the strike zone, and then keeping that popping cork up top. I hope this wasn't too terribly silly, guys, but I thought this was a really cool way to illustrate to you what a jetty looks like from, from a two-dimensional kind of a cross-cut situation. All right, guys, so let's talk about species and when to fish them. The jetties hold fish year-round. You can go to the jetty January through December and catch fish. You have slot reds that live there year round. There are always slot reds there. I don't know how many millions of dollars in tournament money have been won at the Galveston jetties. You can go out there with crankbaits, you can go out there with spinner baits, you can go out there with artificials on a jig head. And if you're patient enough and you work the jetties and you figure them out, you can win any tournament on the county in the Gulf Coast going to the Galveston jetties and catching fish. So there are always, always, always slot reds there. Let's talk about spring. Let's talk about early in the season and we'll go all the way to winter. In the spring and early March, when the water temperature starts warming up, we have a spawning of sheep's head. Giant sheep's head, lots of them. You'll find out by the charter boats. Charter boats are out there smoking down the sheep's head. There's not a particular rock, there's not a particular spot, there's not a particular depth. Wherever those fish are at that day along those giant jetties, you can go out there and get on those sheep's head. Carolina rigs, work great small hooks. Remember, sheep's head have small mouths 
and they have a lot of big teeth. So you don't want a 5 aught circle hook. A 3 aught Mutu light circle hook is perfect. It's small enough that they don't see it. It's strong enough to get inside the corner of the mouth and hook them. Uh, also, a free line live shrimp is a great way to catch sheep's head, spawning or non-spawning on the jetties in the springtime. And then also a popping cork. It keeps the lure up high and it attracts the fish to them. So the sheep's head run is say mid-March-ish. Uh, free line them, Carolina rig them, or you can pop and cork them. Another great big run that happens at the jetties in the spring is black drum run. We're not talking about puppy drums, 15 inches that you like to eat. We're talking about 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 pound black drum. Crack blue crab, a wonderful bait. Take some bigger tackle, take that bigger terminal tackle, that bigger spinning tackle, that five, 6,000 series size stuff, bigger leader material, 30 pound braid, 40 pound leader material. Now we're going up to that five aught circle hook size, that seven aught circle hook size. And then we're putting live crabs on the bottom or big cracked blue crabs, bigger live shrimp, and we're putting them on a Carolina rig and we're setting them on the bottom. Like we talk about where the jetty meets the sand. Put it right there, put two or three lines out, and let that sit. Those uh, black drum are going to be there early spring. You'll know by watching what's going on, watching reports on your local forums, watching YouTube channels, myself and some of the other local YouTubers. We're a great way to find out what's biting and what's feeding and where, because wherever the best bite's at is where we have to go to make good videos for you. We have to make good content, so we've got to be on the current bite. Uh, same with charter captains. They've got to be on the best bite to put you on good fish with your family. So the guides and the YouTube guys will usually usually try to know where the fish are. That's kind of our job to be able to entertain you and show you where they're at. Black drum run in the spring is one of them. Uh, your trout will be there, but it's not going to be very good. They're not going to be very consistent because the water's still a little bit cool. They're still back in the marshes. Um, puppy drum are always going to be there. Slot redfish like we talked about. When we start transitioning from spring through that sheep's head bite, we start transitioning through that black drum bite. We're starting to transition into full blown summer. Water's getting to that magic 70, 72 degree temperature. You're gonna know because you're gonna start hearing about Spanish mackerel showing up out there. Slot reds are always there. Our black drum are always there. Our sheep's head are always there. They're not in the abundance that those sheep's head and black drum were in the spring, but they're there in the summer. You catch them all year long just not in the quantities that you caught them during the spring. But now we're introducing Spanish mackerel. We're introducing more sharks back into it. And now we're starting to introduce speckled trout. The summer months, when it's blazing hot and that water's green all up and down that jetty, that's your speckled trout time of the year. If you're live baiting, that's when you want to be free lining that live shrimp or pinch weight on that live shrimp or on a pinch cork up top. Free line those croakers at the jetties. That'll get those speckled trout moving. There are some guys that are far, far better at than me that go out there and catch boatloads, catch limits of speckled trout on live croaker and live shrimp, free lining them out at the jetties. Remember, guys, if you run to the jetties and you see 10 boats in one spot, that doesn't mean that those 10 boats are on top of fish. It just means that those 10 boats saw nine other boats or eight other boats and they ran to them and got close. Learn the jetties and learn the spots that catch you fish and separate. There's a lot of jetty out there for us all to sit on top of one another. The North Boat Cut is a good spot. It works. That's why people sit there. The end of the North and the end of the South Jetty, they're great spots. But learn the jetties. Strike out. Find an area no one's sitting. Find a depth that no one's sitting at and start prospecting. And what you'll do is you'll build a list of waypoints for these summertime trout where you catch them and there's no one at or where you catch spawning sheep's head the best. You'll find you a little pyramid rock or you'll find you a little place that you can name and that's your spot that people don't fish it because you've, you've found these spots. You prospected, you put the work in, and you found them. So we've moved from summer. Now we've got our mackerel showing up. We've got our shark showing up. We've got the speckled trout bite going on fire. We're still catching our slot reds. We're still catching our flounder. We're still catching our sheep's head. We're still catching our puppy drums. Now we're going to transition to the fall months. The fall months, the big ticket item here, and the big thing that people realize is the bull red run starts. Bull reds spawn out in the Gulf. Then your bull reds, your bigger reds that have been living back up in the bay system and it's time for them to become breeders, or the big ones that have been living in the middle bay and big schools, they're headed offshore to spawn. All right guys, so here we are. It's the fall, the bull red run is going on, and we wanna target those bull reds. That's when we're gonna start throwing that Carolina rig the same way we're doing in the spring for the, uh, the big uh, black drum run. 
We're gonna take those big menhaden, big live shrimp, small white trout, sand trout. We're gonna take these guys and we're gonna put them on the bottom. A great bull red bite that you wouldn't think is cut ladyfish. Catch a ladyfish, keep him. Cut him into chunks and put him out there on the bottom. You'd be surprised how wonderful of a big redfish bite that is. Take that same tackle that you use for the black drum, that heavier terminal tackle, or take your regular trout rods. Take that 15 pound braid, take that 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, and put a three aught, five aught circle hook on it. Pin that piece of cut ladyfish to it and put it on the bottom. Put two, three, four rods out. If everyone's on the boat, hand everybody a rod. Put a shrimp on one, a ladyfish on another, a white trout on another one, and put them on the bottom and hang on, guys. And be patient. And keep in mind, these big bull reds in the fall, they're not just sitting in one spot. They're grazing, they're cruising, they're moving offshore. They're headed out. So just wait and be patient. If you see other boats around you hooking up, there's no need to move to them. Stand your ground and wait and let those fish come to you. Also in the fall time, guys, towards the end of fall, we start to get the flounder run. We all know the flounder run. The flounder are going to start moving out of the marshes and they're going to start moving towards the pass. There's only two ways in our area, guys, in the Galveston area, to get out. That's San Louis Pass and that's out of the Galveston jetties. You guys in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama, wherever you dump out, Pensacola Pass, Destin Pass, Alabama Pass, you guys in Mississippi coming out of the Biloxi River, those fish that are dumping out of those central points are all flooding out into the Gulf to spawn. Here in Texas this year, we're not allowed to harvest them all of November and two weeks of December. Uh, this is the first year it's something new for conservation. Uh, I know that that's a big hit for a lot of guys, but let's be patient and see what it does, guys. But anyway, those fish all have to move out into the Gulf through those single points. So that's where that live bull minnow, that live finger mullet, that live shrimp on the bottom, bouncing that Berkeley Gulp on a 3 8 jig head along the base of the jetties, you can get on that flounder bite, guys. That fall run, there's still a few trout around the jetties there's still a few trout to be had the water hasn't got so warm that they're gone we also haven't lost all of our spanish mackerel yet they're starting to move south back towards mexico back towards the florida keys they're moving that way guys but there's still a few around our puppy drum are still on the jetties our sheep's head are still on the jetties and as always our slot reds are still there doing what slot reds do so now we transition into the winter it's december january February, it's cold, guys, it's miserable. We're gonna move back out to the jetties and what are we gonna find? We're gonna find our regular host of characters. We're gonna find our sheep's head, we're gonna find our black drum, we're gonna find our slot redfish. We're not gonna find as many trout, we're still gonna find a few, but it's not like it was in the summer. Now we're not gonna find the bull reds, the bull reds are off in the Gulf. You're still gonna catch a few, but it's not gonna be as good. Um, winter bite is gonna be your standard residence, guys, and that's gonna be all your standard fishing. Try your free line, try your free line with a split shot, try your cork, your popping cork, and try your Carolina rig. The colder months, me personally, I'm gonna fish lower in the water column. I'm gonna fish down close to the bottom. I'm not saying you won't catch a few sheep sit up top, that's just my personal preference. I like to move them down to the bottom. Uh, so guys, that's a quick overview of the four seasons we're gonna experience at the jetties and just a quick brief highlight of what you can target during those four seasons. What's up guys, welcome back to see you out there and welcome back to another Wednesday how-to video. You guys voted on the community page on YouTube and the video y'all wanted to most see this week is how to jetty fishing. It's a very, very relevant term right now. Everybody's jetty fishing right now. We have the bull red run going on. A lot of our videos lately on the red boat have been at the jetty, so that makes sense. That's a good video. So what we're gonna do, guys, is this video is gonna be a brief overview. What jetties are, how to set up on jetties, and then how to target multiple species on those jetties. You guys have seen all the rigging videos we've done where we talk about specific ways to fish live shrimp. Those all apply here, guys. This is where those videos fill in. And what we're gonna do is as we move on through the year and we move on through the cycles and we hit some of the fish spawns and migrations that we talk about in this video, we'll do a more detailed video on that specific bite at the jetty. So we're gonna talk about, you know, spring, summer, fall and winter in this one, but then we're gonna nail down on them in detail when those bites happen, like the spring sheep's head run or the spring uh, black drum run or the fall bull red run, which we're in the fall bull red run now, so we'll be working on that video soon. But this is a jetty fishing 101 entry level beginner how to video guys so if you're looking for some really deep detail those will be coming 
So y'all enjoy this video, and if we didn't answer your questions, y'all remember, uh, put your comments down below and we'll help you out.